Ah, what a beautiful day to trade an entire team for absolutely nobody. What? What the fuck? That's right, Trevor Lawrence. You have no wide receivers to catch the ball, no O-line to block, and no team at, at all. Yeah, you have no one. <laughs> now, before you freak out, I didn't trade this team for nobody. I actually got a ton of draft picks, and I'm gonna be using those picks to build the best possible all rookie team and win the Super Bowl. Otherwise, Trevor Lawrence said he would leave. And so I had no choice but to give Trev a kiss and start the draft. All right, so we got the second overall pick and I found this dude, Cody Edwards. And his scouting report is ridiculous. Elite acceleration, great speed, great strength. I mean, this dude is a demigod of O-line. So I draft him and he has 89 strength, 84 acceleration and 73 speed. I mean, bro might as well be running routes as a tight end. With our first pick out of the way, we got pick number 21 coming up and I found this running back at the top of the draft board Matt Daney. He ran a 4-3-7 40-yard dash, and it looks like he's going to be one of the more elusive running backs in this draft class. So I draft him, and come to find out, he has 93 speed, 70 strength, 95 acceleration. Bro is going to be a demon with this offense. <laughs> As y'all know, we have multiple first round picks. And with this pick, I think I'm gonna go defense. I found this defensive tackle. I don't know what's going on. I must be finding all the fast players for some reason because this dude ran a 4.66 at the college pro day. So I was watching the NFL combine on my TV and it turns out this defensive tackle I found ran a faster 40 yard dash than some of the wide receivers in this year's draft class. Which is pretty insane if you think about it given the fact he's almost 300 pounds. They give him 79 speed, 80 acceleration, 86 strength. The only downside of D'Angelo is that he has bronze development. But to be honest, I'm not too worried. With my next two picks, I add another beast to the O-line and I add a highly recruited tight end, which reminded me I needed to get some wide receivers on this team. Right now we have none. And after looking through every single wide receiver in this draft class, this dude, Andrew Swinton, was the most intriguing. He is six foot five, 226, with 90 speed, 88 acceleration. We basically just drafted Calvin Johnson with dread. As we started to piece this team together pick by pick, and the later and later we got into the draft, the harder it was to find talent. And after back to back bad picks, I found this game changing player. Boom! Big boy Phantom with a cannon. All right, it's not actually Phantom. His name's Ray Jarrett. But we calling him Phantom. Rock, boom. Hey there, Delilah. I was trapping in your city. I I'm not going to lie to y'all. The rest of the draft went by super fast. And we didn't find the best of players. But this is what our team ended up looking like after the draft. And I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty stoked to see how this offense does. We got a ton of hidden development players. Like everyone on the team is basically hidden. Our defense, on the other hand, um, is not looking too good. But I do have some hope. I, I have some hope in our offense because I don't know what this defense is going to do. Donahue, do not, do not look at me like that right now. Week one, we are taking on the Chargers at home. And this is going to be a tough battle for our offense just because the Chargers defense is so good. And I take a scramble with Trevor Lawrence, snap somebody's ankles and get like a 40 yard gain on our second play of the drive. We throw a little screen to Danny and he's already taking the role of being a huge part in our offense as he punches it in to cap off the drive. Danny is one of those players I could see becoming a superstar or maybe even an X factor in these next couple of games. Our defense, unfortunately, does does not give the Chargers much trouble. They're able to go down and get seven, but that's all right. As long as Trevor Lawrence is throwing dots like he is right now. I mean, he hits Lens in stride twice back to back to set us up in the red zone to give Danny the ball and get him his second tutty of the day. Danny is coming for that X Factor, man. Somehow our defense causes a three and out and gives us the ball once again. We are up by seven, but I do want to get some more points on the board and Swinton just absolutely smacks that man. On first down, we hand it off to Danny and this dude can run, man. 
He gets about 20, 25 yards. This drive ultimately ends in a sack, which forces us to kick a field goal. So I can't be too mad because now we are up by 10 against the Chargers. And not only that, our defense gets another stop, putting this offense and Danny back in the spotlight. And it's just domination after that. Danny showing how elusive he can be when the ball is in his hands as he scores his third touchdown on the day and the chargers were not happy about that they stormed down and put another seven on the board i cannot be mad at our defense because they are outperforming any expectations i had our offense on the other hand is kicking their second field goal of the day i hope these field goals don't come to bite us because the chargers go down score a touchdown and now our lead is cut to six right now our offense cannot settle for another field goal trevor lawrence escaping a sack from khalil mack he's still on the tail end but you just see that speed man trevor lawrence making things happen next play throws the ball up to swinton and he absolutely mosses the defender the chargers must not have read swinton's draft report because this dude is six foot five bro he is going to catch any and everything thrown his way when i said catch Calvin Johnson Jr. I meant it. This dude is going to be a menace on our team. And this game was one for the books after that. The Chargers do end up scoring, but all we had to do was run out the clock. And I am more than happy to say we got our first win of the season, 35 to 27 an amazing game and after our first win we had two upgrades for some o-linemen and we had an upgrade for our left end jamario richardson and this dude had a sack in his first game but also got injured in week two we are facing the colts and our offense is looking to continue the momentum trevor lawrence back at it throwing dots and swinton is really becoming one of trevor lawrence's primary targets we give payday Daney his first touch of the game and he easily gets a first down and right after that we hit lands on a little slant and his speed is just too blazing diving into the end zone for our first tutty of the day and the cherry on top is that our defense gets a stop and gets the ball back in trevor lawrence's hands and it just looks like we have so much momentum offensively and there is nothing that the colts could do to stop trevor lawrence right now he was throwing dot after dot he throws a deep ball in the middle of the field for swin he goes and grabs it and rolls into the end zone for our second touchdown of the day and the colts finally answer back and get a touchdown of their own all right i'm not gonna lie i was maybe feeling myself a little too much i throw a deep ball to harrison and it gets picked off and i know my defense is not happy with me right now because they have to go back on the field but our defense holds strong and holds the colts to a field goal we run a little speed option with payday Danny, and he absolutely snaps into his ankles and gets us the first down trevor lawrence throws a dot to amos on the sideline our tight end i really want to see him get more into the offense and that directly sets up a Danny touchdown i think he has four on the year so far our defense has exceeded all of my expectations they hold the colts yet to another field goal swinton is probably going to be one of those wide receivers where we could just throw it up to him and he's going to somehow come down with it right here i make an irrational decision on a speed option which gives the colts the ball and they're able to capitalize on that and score and now the game is tied at 21 now our offense needs to score on this drive i do not want to put this game on our defense we've put our defense through way too much already but i know they're biting their nails on the sideline right now as trevor lawrence throws a deep ball to harrison and i don't know how he caught that harrison is a short quick wide receiver and he goes up there and mosses it like he's swinton or something and speaking of swinton we roll left and hit swinton on this little slant route in the end zone for the touchdown we put the pressure on our defense one last time but they come through and hold the colts and that means all we have to do is run out the clock and we got another win in the book and our defense is definitely the mvp of this game because offensively we made some really dumb mistakes and our defense came in clutch getting us the stops that we needed to get this win a couple weeks go by and we are nine and two the number one seed in the playoffs and a lot of players dev traits have been revealed i mean take a look at our offense right now this is a completely different team than week one with payday Danny and amos both getting superstar development swinton has star our whole o-line has star and man you guys are gonna be happy when you see this look at our defense bro we got richardson with superstar dev we got a few stars in the mix a few bronze players i'm just really happy with this team right now like what could go wrong in week 13 we are taking on the bucks at home and we are already down by a touchdown they got 13 on the board if i'm keeping it a buck with y'all right now i am looking forward to the play I want to get this win and get out of here as fast as possible. 
We throw it up to Swinton and he comes down with it. We are in the red zone. And Amos runs an absolutely beautiful route right here. Gets both feet in and we tie the game. And it didn't take long for the Bucks to answer. And now we only have a minute on the clock. We cannot lose here. We need to score a touchdown because I am not losing that number one seed. Trevor rolls right and hits Swinton in the back of the end zone for the touchdown to tie the game at 21. Now the Bucks weren't able to do anything else in regulation and this game was going into overtime. A Unfortunately, the Bucks won the toss. They, of course, selected to receive. They kick a field goal. We can't answer, and we lose. Definitely not the outcome I was looking for when we came into this game. But week 14, we are taking on the Panthers. We're already down by seven here in the second quarter. We throw a little screen to our backup running back. And he's super fast, so he's able to get the touchdown. Our defense puts us in a perfect position to capitalize as they hold the Panthers to a field goal. We were looking pretty good offensively, getting our momentum back. But ultimately, the Panthers defense was able to hold us to a field goal. That ties the game up at 10 to 10. And we give the Panthers a ball with about a minute remaining. And they were able to score. We come out of halftime looking to put some points on the board. I'm sick and tired of settling for field goals in these stupid close games. The Panthers are a really good team though. Don't get me wrong. They are the number one seed on the other side of the bracket. But I still want to win this game. It's the battle of the number one seeds. I want to show that we are the superior team. Because we might even face this team in the Super Bowl. Who knows? We hit Lens on a nice little slant and it is fourth and one. I don't know what to do here. I audible to a run with our backup running back and he I thought he was going to pick up the first but he actually gets tackled for a loss we don't even score on the drive the Panthers go down and score again and now we're down 14 this is just not making sense like does the universe not want us to be the number one seed regardless I do know one thing Trevor Lawrence wants to win this game man he's stringing together a amazing drive throwing dot after dot to our wide receivers and he's putting us in the position to get back in this game Swinton gets absolutely cracked on that play I call hurry up and we need to score right now I throw it to lens there's a little opening and we score and to my surprise our defense again this season our defense has been the MVP they were able to stop the Panthers and give us the ball with a minute on the clock we run a little handoff with payday Danny and on third down he was able to get us the first that we needed Trevor Lawrence rolling right Hits Swinton for the first down. And as of right now, all that's on this offense's mind is scoring a touchdown. You can really feel the intensity. There is 22 seconds left. And Trevor Lawrence drops back, gets sacked. We have no timeout, so we have to call hurry up. This is definitely going to be the last play of the game. There's two seconds left. We snap the ball. Trevor Lawrence rolls to the right. I have no other choice but to throw this up with a prayer. It gets tipped and we lose another game. And I am not going to lie. These losses are getting to me and this team. In week 15, we are taking on the Bengals, who is an 87 overall team, while we are, are 75. Um yeah anyway we are down by seven in this game we are in the red zone with two minutes left in the second half we give the ball to our backup running back and he scores a touchdown and in these last couple of games he's just scored i don't know how he's getting on the field but he's scoring every single time but you know who else is scoring yep you guessed it, the Bengals. We are now down another touchdown. And if we want to win this game, we have to score every opportunity we get because our defense is not going to be able to hold that offense for very long. On first and goal, we hit Amos on a little slant and he's just too quick for that linebacker. He gets in for the touchdown tie game. And with breaking news, the Bengals don't score once. They actually scored twice because we weren't able to do anything offensively and now we're down by 14. The only way we win this game is if we score really quickly and get the onside kick. I'm looking to throw a bomb on this next play. I see Harrison smokes the quarterback guarding him and gets us in the red zone with a minute left. If we want to win this game, we have to score right now. So I'm looking through my playbook. I think I see a good play. I'm rolling to the left. I see my boy Lenz in the middle of the field. He catches it, dives across the line, and gets us the touchdown we needed, man. And it all comes down to this kick right here. If we can get this kick, we go down, we score, and we win this game. I kick it with a prayer, and the Bengals recover it with ease. And that is going to wrap up this game. And we take our third L in a row this season. And man, that one hurt. That one hurt, bro. That one hurt. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. We did take another L against the Steelers. 
So that's four L's in a row. And I didn't even want to show you guys because it's just that bad. Like showing you guys four L's back to back to back is just devastating. Before we got into another game, I wanted to check out what the playoff picture was looking like. And we are out of the playoffs completely. We literally went from the number one seed to not even in the playoffs. So this next game against the Falcons, if we don't win, we might not even be in the playoffs this season. We are starting this game up by seven and this Atlanta Falcons offense out of nowhere just started moving. They do have a rookie quarterback though. We drop an interception and that could have been game changing right there. So far in this game, this rookie quarterback is playing our defense like a fiddle. He's just calling the right plays making the right reads he's throwing it to the open wide receivers on the next play we get a key tackle for a loss and then we bring the pressure which the quarterback folds under forcing an incompletion and now they have to kick a field goal which they do end up making our offense takes the field and doesn't answer and now our defense is back on the field but this time things are a little different we get the interception that we needed in our offense they better score we need to win this game they have to put points on the board they do the complete opposite and fumble and now our defense is back on the field and i'm starting to think that the reason why we're losing games is because our offense isn't capitalizing on what our defense is doing and man i can just feel the frustration from the defense but we get another interception the defense is literally doing everything they can right now can the offense please score for the love of god no they punt it you cannot make this up this defense is literally fighting for their life every drive every defensive possession and the offense is just not doing anything we get another pick bro another one that's three in a row can the offense please i beg you please score right now bro i cannot thank you the offense finally scores and now all we have to do is just play good defense have them run out the clock and we're gonna walk out of here with a win and i cannot express how frustrated i am in our offense like our defense is playing every single play their hearts out as we get a forced fumble Dion elliott picks it up and he takes it to the crib and that's gonna wrap up this game we needed that win we needed that win man our defense single-handedly won us that game 35 to 9 was the final score and we only have one more team standing between us and the playoffs and that team is the new england patriots this is our last game of the season and our last chance to make the playoffs and there is no way I'm about to lose this game. And neither is Trevor Lawrence, man. His lens on the sideline for a first down, then hits Amos in stride for another first. And this offense is starting to look like the offense I remember. Danny running for a quick first down. And something that we can't forget is Danny is in the running for Offensive Rookie of the Year as he gets our first touchdown of the day. Danny has quickly became a fan favorite, one of my favorite players on this team. And the Patriots, unfortunately, go down and score a touchdown of their own. This offense is rolling right now, and I want to keep the momentum because that's the only way we're going to win this game is if we put points on the board. And Danny is running through everybody on that Patriots defense. Danny was initially recruited as a like an elusive running back, a speed running back. But honestly, he can do it all. He surprised me with his ability to truck players. But every now and then, he gets caught lacking like right there. Regardless, we are in the red zone and pretty Pretty much anytime we're in the red zone we're gonna give it to Danny because he just has the ability to get in the end zone no matter what and the pressure is back on our defense here this is a must win game so our defense does have to show up and they hold him to a field goal there which is perfect for us Lawrence rolls right avoiding the pressure and hits Swinton and Swinton shows me why he's one of my favorite wide receivers in the open field this dude could absolutely truck anybody that's in his way and it looks like on offense we could do just about anything we have the perfect balance right now between running the ball and passing i think we confused the patriots defense completely as we're able to um who is that's Stoudemire. He's never seen the field before, but he caught a touchdown. Our defense gets us a good stop, and now all we have to do is build our lead, and this offense is on a roll. Harrison able to sneak in for the touchdown. He's one of the fastest wide receivers in the league. He has like 97 speed, man. We end up punting later in the game and absolutely rocking the punt returner and recovering the fumble, and I think with that, we really just crushed the Patriots' hopes of getting back into this game. When we drop back and lob it to Swinton. Y'all already know he's coming down with it. We 
get another touchdown. We hit Lance one more time for our last touchdown of the game. And this was just an overall amazing offensive performance along with our defense. And we get a must win game, which puts our name back into the playoff bracket. We are now the number three seed. But we have to go against the Bengals. And last time we played the Bengals, y'all should remember, it was not pretty. But hey, I'm going to try to keep things positive. And our boy McLoyd got AFC Defensive Player of the Week. He had a monster game last week with five sacks. And to my surprise, of course, Joe Burrow, the quarterback we have to go against this week, got Offensive Player of the Week. It's... It's, it's like we can't escape him. He's everywhere. Regardless, here we are, our first playoff game in the wild card. And man, I am so proud of this team. I was not expecting them to make it this far. For instance, our defense was the number one defense in the league with nine fumbles and 16 interceptions. And man, at the start of the season, I was not expecting that. I was also peeping our boy Danny's stats on the season, and he ended up having the most touchdowns of any running back with 26. He also had 1,400 yards running rushing which is insane for a rookie running back our number one defense was definitely led by d'angelo mcloyd he had 14.5 sacks on the season andrew swinton aka calvin johnson jr had an amazing season himself with 1200 yards receiving and 10 touchdowns but this season is not over man we still got the wild card and i'm still trying to win this super bowl we start this game down by three with hopes of scoring a touchdown. If we want to win this game, we cannot make any mistakes. We have to score on every single drive. And what a better way to score a touchdown than lobbing it to Swinton. You already know he's coming down with it. And our defense was able to get us a stop and get the ball back in Trevor Lawrence's hands. We're in the red zone. Hits Swinton again. He's breaking a tackle. And I don't want to get too ahead of myself. But if we score here, we might have this dub in the bag. We lob it up to Swinton and he comes down with it. But his feet are out of bounds, and now we have to kick a field goal. And, man, I could smell the dub. Like, it was in my hand. The Bengals were able to score on their next drive, tying the game up at 10. But Danny's looking to make a difference, and I... Oh, my gosh. I thought he was gone. This game is going to come down to who has a better offense. Trevor Lawrence throwing a dot to Amos in the end zone. That was a perfect throw. We end up missing an extra point, but we get the ball back and kick a field goal to put us up by 9. This does not last long because... The Bengals go down and score a touchdown, and we're only up by two now. It's all right, though. I trust this offense. We hit Lens on the sideline, and if we score right now, I think this game is out of reach for the Bengals. There's only two minutes left, and we're running out the clock. Danny! I don't know what is going on. Danny was able to find a hole and score. I was just trying to run out the clock, but we get a touchdown, but the Bengals get a touchdown, too. And now they're kicking an onside. We recover. Whew, man, we got lucky, I'm not going to lie, because we were not in the formation to recover an onside. And now all we have to do is run out the clock. Looking at the scoreboard, this game was really close, but I do feel like we had control of the game the whole time. Danny somehow finds these wide open holes and gets touchdowns. Like, if you give this dude the ball, he is going to score, even when you're trying not to. And we are able to walk out of Cincinnati with our first ever playoff W in the wildcard and we are moving on next up we have the browns which are a four seed we got both the offense and defensive player of the week last week with donahue with eight tackles and two ints danny with an absolute monster game danny gets an upgrade he is a 84 true overall but at 88 with the morale boost and he gets all these upgrades plus an ability slot and we needed that going into this game because we are going to be relying on danny heavily we are back in jacksonville and swinton just dropping passes on national television not a good look but what is a good look is this playoff bracket man if we win this game we can either go against the patriots or the Kansas City Chiefs, and I am not trying to play the Chiefs, so we want the Patriots to win. We start out with the ball, and it looks like Trevor Lawrence is starting right where he left off when we played the Bengals, and it just seems like our offense cannot be stopped. I thought Danny was going to get in right here, but he is at the one-yard line, and if you thought I wasn't giving Danny the ball again, you are tripping because he deserved that touchdown. I thought he actually got across the line. Our defense has their first test here, and they ace it, holding the Browns to an absolute donut, and we are back in the red zone and this is not a good look for the browns because when danny's in the red zone he's gonna make some things happen the browns must have forgot danny led the league in touchdowns man y'all gotta put somebody on him y'all gotta i don't know what you gotta do but it looks like we gonna win this game with ease we are up 17 and we are back on offense we hit lens in stride and he dives in and it thought it was a touchdown 
but he didn't score. I don't know how these aren't touchdowns, but we do a little uh, jet sweep and he gets a touchdown. Danny gets another one. That's three on the day. And if I'm the Chiefs or the Patriots, I am terrified of this offense and Danny because he has scored four touchdowns, making the Browns look absolutely silly. And we put a show on for the hometown crowd, man. We smacked the Browns. 41 to 10 should not be a score of a playoff game. It makes you think if the Browns should have even made it. And to my surprise, the New England Patriots beat the Chiefs. I don't know how they did it because the Chiefs are so good in Madden, but they did it. And now we're one win away from the Super Bowl. This game starts out with the Patriots kicking a field goal and putting them up by seven. Man, I don't know about you guys, but my heart is racing right now. We hit Swinton on a slant. Avoiding a sack. Swinton hits a juke but steps out of bounds. That could have been a big play. We hit Danny on the sideline and he's able to break a tackle and get us the first down. The only thing on my mind right now is scoring because if we score, we could tie this game. And Danny showed off that speed, man. Danny is the GOAT, bro. Danny is the GOAT. Y'all cannot tell me any different. Unfortunately, the Patriots were able to score, but they missed a field goal. And now all we got to do is score and kick a field goal and we are in the lead. But that's easier said than done. We are on a time crunch right now with 16 seconds left. We hit Lens in the middle of the field. Call a timeout. Give Danny the ball in the red zone. And of course, if we give Payday Danny the ball, he going to find the end zone. Our defense takes the field again. We have a one point lead. The Patriots are setting up to kick a field goal, which would give them a two point lead. This game is so weird. Like the score is so close. But yeah, I'm not letting that phase me. I got to score a touchdown. Trevor Lawrence breaking a sack. C. Swinton on the sideline. He gets both his feet down. We in the red zone on the five yard line. Of course, Payday Danny getting the ball. He's too quick, man. You cannot catch up to him. He gets a touchdown. And all our defense has to do is get a stop and we win this game almost guaranteed. There's two minutes left and the Patriots are looking to put together a drive. And I'm not going to lie. It looks like the Patriots aren't going to go down without a fight. They put together an amazing drive and end up scoring. I try to blitz on here, but they're able to find their big tight end in the back of the end zone. And the Patriots are winning by one point. There is no way I'm about to make it this far in the playoffs with this team and lose by one point. I'm just not letting that happen. We hit Amos on the sideline and this dude has became a safety valve for Trevor Lawrence. Anytime in the clutch, we know Amos is going to catch it and he just seems to get open. We hit Danny on the sideline. He tried to break a tackle. Ooh, a flag is holding on us. Lens, what are you doing? 54 seconds left. Our Super Bowl hopes are on the line. We hit Danny with the screen. I wanted to get out of bounds here, but I didn't. We give Danny the ball again, and there's a wide open hole, man. We are in field goal range. It looks like this game is about over. We give it to Danny, and he gets it for the touchdown, and we are going to win this game. We end up winning by a touchdown. That was a crazy game. Like, one point, two point leads, three point leads, but we end up coming on top. I'm so proud of this team. And we're about to walk into the Super Bowl, man. I don't know who we're about to play. Before we get into who we're facing in the Super Bowl, Matt Daney has four upgrades. I don't know how one player gets four upgrades at once, but somehow he was managed to get that. And McLeod has an upgrade too. And this is huge because Matt Daney with four upgrade. Wait, what was that? Hold up. How did Matt Dady become an X-Factor? Bro has been a superstar for like half the season and all of a sudden the game before the Super Bowl becomes an X-Factor, gets four upgrade points. In the history of me playing Madden, I have never seen a player develop so fast in my entire life. But they call him Payday Danny for a reason. And with all these upgrade points, I wonder what his final overall is going to be for this season. I use all of his skill points or like his upgrade points on elusive back just in the hopes of getting a plus one speed because adding plus one speed to Danny would be ridiculous. But after all of his upgrades, he ends up being a 93 overall. And McLeod is our next dude that we got to throw one upgrade on, which we do, which gives him just a little bit of a boost. He is now a 77 overall. Now that all the upgrades are out of the way, we are facing the Giants in the Super Bowl. I did not expect this week one to even make it to the Super Bowl, let alone be facing the Giants. And man, I hope you guys have enjoyed this season as much as I have. To make it to the Super Bowl was 
I don't know. I was kind of joking at first about making it, and now we're actually here. I cannot lose this game, bro. This team has gone through way too much. And I know you guys who play franchise know this feeling. Like, this team is like my little baby, bro. Like, we have built this team from nothing. We're starting out on defense, and I'm here to show the Giants why we are the number one defense in the league. This game, I'm going to be showing you guys the defense and the offensive side of the ball. The majority of the season, I've shown you either offense or defense and simmed. But this game is the Super Bowl. I want you guys to see every single play. One player that we're getting to know is the Giants rookie quarterback, Bacon. He has been absolutely lighting it up all season. And he's showing us right here why he's a star in the making. Because he's doing absolutely whatever he wants on offense. And this Giants team tends to pass the ball and rarely run. Like, they barely run unless they're in the red zone. And right here, they get a huge pickup. There is a flag on the play. But it is on us. We jump offside. So it was pretty much much a free play for the Giants and they get a huge pickup I feel like Bacon is testing our defense he lobs it up it's one-on-one -on -one and Dion Elliott is able to break that up that was scary that could have been a touchdown after a short completion for a huge gain the Giants are now on the six yard line and like I said earlier they only run the ball when they are in the red zone and their running back just trucks our entire team and they score. And I can tell just off how the Giants are moving offensively, this is going to be a battle. This is not going to be an easy game. We start the game off by handing it to Payday Danny and he is going to break free and he's going to go to the crib, man, on our own 25 and we're going to tie this game up. Payday Danny cashing out with a 75-yard touchdown, showing exactly why he is an X-Factor and one of the best running backs in this league in his first ever season. Our defense is taking the field once again and I want to stop this Giants offense because they can just move however they want against us. I don't know if it's because of our secondary. I feel like we're playing good defense but the Giants and Bacon are just finding openings and playing very efficient and attacking our small weaknesses. We set a ton of pressure right there to force an incompletion and on third and four they run it but Donahue tackles him and this is exactly why we are the number one defense in the league we get a huge stop and now they have to punt it and this punter must have like that yrg bionic leg upgrade because he almost pins us on the one but we are back on offense and back to giving Danny the ball and the giants cannot hold Danny, man like i don't know if it's our o line or how quick Danny is, but any run play we do, we're at least picking up 10 yards of carry. Without Danny on this team, it would be completely different. Danny opens up the field so much for us and allows Trevor Lawrence to get so much time in the pocket and make the reads that we need to make. Right here, he has no time, throws off his off foot on a screen and Danny has blockers in front. He cuts to the left, almost gets in the end zone. We are on the four yard line. I'm looking to pass right here to hopefully catch this defense off guard. Trevor Lawrence rolling, there is nobody open. Trevor Lawrence rolling to the left, takes it himself, dives into the end zone, and that is gonna be a touchdown. We are up by seven in the Super Bowl. One thing that I cannot forget is Trevor Lawrence took on a huge role with this team, man. Really being a leader. He's so young, but he had a team full of rookies, bro. Like everyone's younger than him. So he had to be the leader. Our defense, though, has been feeling the pressure all game long as the Giants are stringing together another solid drive. It seems as if it does not matter what coverage I call. If it's man, if it's zone, it does not matter. Bacon is finding every single small tight opening in this defense, and they are now on the eight-yard line. They hit their tight end and open field, but Donahue gets a huge tackle. They have to call a timeout. There is 44 seconds left on second down. Mick Lloyd gets a huge sack, and that's setting up third down and goal. They are now 20 yards out with 19 seconds left. All we have to do is stop them from scoring, and we force them to kick a field goal. This is huge. They're going to hit their wide receiver on a little slam route, and Hart is going to get a huge tackle. That absolutely changed the course of this game because now we are up by four going out of halftime, and we have the ball. So if we score here this game might be done and over with and we might be super bowl champ this is what i mean by danny opening up the field because we're able to make reads like that when danny is running like this man look at him just truck everybody he's at least getting eight yards to carry 10 yards to carry and we could just throw little dots like that little short passes it just opens the field so much for us offensively. Right when I started to feel comfortable, we feel the pressure and Trevor Lawrence tries to escape it but gets sacked for a 
yard loss just like that all the momentum that we had offensively has disappeared we give it to Danny on second down he's able to pick up a couple on third and 19 we try to hit Swinton but he drops it man that could have been a touchdown. I, I'm extremely disappointed by that drive, man. We had such a good drive going, and it ends in a field goal. I'm kind of worried because I have yet to see this Giants offense make a mistake. In all honesty, I don't feel like our defense is playing bad. I just feel like the Giants offense is playing really, really good right now. It looks like the Giants found their quarterback of the future because this dude, Bacon, is able to sit in the pocket for such a long time and just drop dimes. Here they get like five yards on a run. And they are inching closer and closer to a touchdown. Bacon is able to avoid a sack, hits his wide receiver in the end zone, and now the game is tied at 17. Both of these teams are playing extremely well. This is the kind of Super Bowl people would pay to watch because it is so offensive heavy. Like, both teams are playing such good football that I feel like it's going to come down to which defense can get a stop. One thing I know is this Giants team cannot stop Danny, man. He out here snapping ankles, shattering dreams, getting first downs, and scoring touchdowns, man. They cannot stop him. Amos on the left side of the field trucks somebody, and we are in the red zone with two minutes left. Danny gets the handoff, and he's going to score. Without a doubt right now, if we win this Super Bowl, Danny is the Super Bowl MVP. I can almost guarantee it. I'm not even trying to glaze. Payday Danny is just like that, bro. And right now, it's all up to our defense. This game is coming down to the wire as there's only a minute and 50 seconds left. And when I saw that we were going to be playing the Giants in the Super Bowl, I thought it was going to be a lot easier. But man, this team has proved me wrong in every single way. But we force an incompletion on first down. That's exactly what we needed, man. We need to get Bacon uncomfortable. We need this Giants offense to get out of tune. But man, they are just throwing dots. They're throwing these little slants, man. And it's just, we cannot stop them across the middle of the field. Bacon dumps it off to his tight end. I absolutely butcher the tackle and they pick up the first down. And this team is rolling right now and we got to stop them. I am not going to lose this Super Bowl, man. I am not. Bacon runs. Hurry up. There is 40 seconds left. They are in the red zone. We need to make a play. Donahue cuts across the field and absolutely smacks the running back. Gets the fumble. And we're going to win this game, man. Donahue comes up in the clutch. Smacks the running back and forces a fumble. This is, has to be the most beautiful. Oh, my gosh. This is the most beautiful story ever, bro. Trevor Lawrence. Danny, Swinton, Donahue, McLeod, Dion Elliott. Oh my gosh, this team has came from nothing. And they are officially Super Bowl champions, man. Man, I'm not, I'm not crying. You guys are crying. No, I'm not crying. I swear. Oh, my God, bro. We're Super Bowl champs, bro. We're Super Bowl champs. Oh. I, I don't know how we did it, but we're the Super Bowl champs. Uh, this bracket is absolutely insane. Um, speaking of insane, Matt Daney, Rookie of the Year. D'Angelo McLeod, Defensive Rookie of the Year. Uh, we get coach of the year, Matt Daney gets Super Bowl MVP, and we get the Jaguars their first ever Super Bowl. Um, these are the these are the upgrades after the Super Bowl, pretty much our whole team. Um, I want to check out our team really quick before this video ends. I want to see what they look like at the end of the season compared to the beginning. Everybody was hidden. Um, now we got Amos at Superstar, Daney at X Factor. We got a ton of star development players. I'm surprised that Lenz stayed a bronze the whole entire season because he was balling out. On defense, Donahue and Richardson were both a uh, superstar development before the Super Bowl. And then after the Super Bowl, they turned a star. I'm not sure why Madden does that. I really don't know. Y'all can let me know in the comments. But this is our team, man. We are 76 overall Super Bowl champions. If you guys want to see another season with this team, we have a ton more draft picks because, again, I traded the entire Jaguars team for draft picks. So we got a lot of we got a ton of draft picks next year. So if y'all want to see a part two, a season number two with this team, let me know down below. It's been your boy DD Drift. I'm signing off. Peace out.